Hello everyone and welcome to the latest camera tutorial from PentaxForums.com. In this video, we will do our best to demystify the infamous DSLR crop factor. If you've ever heard people mention that DSLRs have a 1.5 times crop factor, or they offer more zoom than film cameras, this video will show you why. Let's start by taking a look at this circular image, which represents everything that a normal 50mm camera lens might see when pointed at a subject. The red rectangle in the middle represents the camera's sensor. Anything inside of it will show up on your images, whereas the remainder will not. The rectangle in this illustration corresponds to the size of traditional 35mm film, also referred to as full frame. Let's capture a photo of this setup and move it over to the right so we can take a look at it later. So, when the digital era came about, DSLR manufacturers realized the high costs associated with manufacturing large sensors. Therefore, they decided to put smaller sensors in most DSLRs to make them accessible to consumers, and they only left full-frame sensors in very high-end cameras. Take a look at the illustration on the left and notice how the rectangle representing the sensor has become smaller. This sensor format, known as APS-C, is one and a half times smaller diagonally and has just under half the area of the old full-frame format. Let's capture another photo and save it on the right side of the screen. Do you notice anything? Because the sensor size has been reduced, the camera can only see a smaller portion of what the lens covers. Thus, the effective field of view is now narrower. We're not done yet, though. Camera manufacturers did one more thing to further reduce prices. Since the APS-C sensor is much smaller than full frame, it doesn't have to be used with lenses that cover such a large image circle. So, manufacturers started producing crop format lenses with a smaller image circle, like this. Let's snap another photo now. Notice how both images taken with the APS-C camera look the same. It's important to note that this crop format lens would still have a focal length of 50 millimeters. On APS-C, it still delivers the same field of view as the full frame 50, but it can be made smaller and cheaper. The only caveat is that the smaller 50 millimeter wouldn't be usable on full frame because it wouldn't completely cover the larger sensor. So what's the bottom line? The one and only implication of the crop factor is the reduced field of view. It does not magnify the image or give you more zoom, and it doesn't modify the behavior of full frame lenses. But it's a very confusing subject, because for a full frame camera to have the same field of view as an APS-C camera, it would need a lens with a focal length that's one and a half times longer, such as 75 millimeters on the full frame, if we were using a 50 millimeter lens on APS-C. This back and forth conversion is what causes all the confusion. Therefore, the best thing to do is to forget all about the conversion and just look at the focal length of your lens, as this is a fixed optical property. No matter what 50mm lens you mount on an APS-C camera, you always get the same field of view. It doesn't matter if the lens was originally designed for a larger format, like full frame, or even medium format. The same goes for every other focal length out there. We hope that this animation has shed some light on the principles behind the crop factor, and that you won't be confused about the concept going forward. Keep watching if you'd like to see it again, or click on the link in the description for an in-depth article on the topic. Thanks for watching.